Next up, we're going to look at factoring polynomials. So let's start by determining the quotient of f of x over x minus 2, where f of x is the function shown here. So remember, we are using long division. To get rid of the x cubed, I'm going to multiply x minus 2 by x squared. And that gives me x cubed minus 2x squared. Subtracting, we have 6x squared. Next, we bring down the x. To get rid of the 6x squared, I'm going to multiply x minus 2 by 6x. And then finally, to get rid of the 13x, I'm going to multiply x minus 2 by 13. So it says determine the quotient and state the remainder. So here is our quotient. And here is the remainder. Is x minus 2 a factor of f of x? If x minus 2 was a factor of f of x, then our remainder should have been 0. So in our example, x minus 2 is not a factor of f of x. Determine the value of f at 2, and what do you notice? So what we're going to do now is take our function and sub in the value of 2. If we evaluate the function at 2, we see we get the value of 20, which you notice is the remainder from above. And in fact, this leads into what we call the remainder theorem. And the remainder theorem states that when a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus a, that the remainder is actually equal to f at a. So what this means is, if I have a function f of x, and I divide it by x minus a, if I want to get the remainder, I could use long division, but a shortcut is to evaluate the remainder by taking f at a. So why is this important? So with the remainder theorem, we can now find factors of f of x. So how can we use the remainder theorem to find a factor? We can sub in x values until we get a remainder of 0. And this leads into what we call the factor theorem. The factor theorem states, x minus a is a factor of f of x if and only if f at that x value is equal to 0. So while this is great, there are many numbers that you can try. There is a way, however, to determine what numbers will work best. So recall that f of x is equal to x cubed plus 4x squared plus x minus 6. We've already tried 2, and we saw that the remainder was 20. So we know that x minus 2 is not a factor. So how do you know what numbers to choose? Well, first way is to look at the last term, the negative 6. And tell me, what are factors of negative 6? So for example, we have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6. So these are the numbers that you should try. We've already tried 2, and we know that doesn't work. But we just go through the list and try all these numbers until we hit 1 that gives us 0. So let's say we try f at negative 1. Then we get negative 1 cubed plus 4 times negative 1 squared plus negative 1 minus 6. And this gives us negative 4 for our remainder. So this tells us, therefore, that x plus 1 is not a factor. So what we're actually doing is trying to sub in a number until we get one of the zeros. And clearly, negative 1 does not give us a 0, and 2 does not give us a 0. So let's go to our next option, f at 1. And if you try f at 1, you get 1 cubed 
plus 4 times 1 squared plus 1 minus 6, which does equal 0. And since it equals 0 based upon the factor theorem, then we know that x minus 1 is a factor. So now that we know a factor of f of x, let's factor this function. So we're going to take x minus 1, and we're going to divide it by x cubed plus 4x squared plus x minus 6. So first off, let's get rid of the x cubed. So I'm going to multiply x minus 1 by x squared. Next, we need to get rid of the 5x squared. So I'm going to multiply x minus 1 by 5x. And finally, let's get rid of the 6x by multiplying x minus 1 by 6. Notice we've achieved our goal. We have a remainder of 0. So again, this verifies that x minus 1 is a factor. So what we now know is this, that f of x, this function that we have, is equal to x minus 1, and we have left over x squared plus 5x plus 6. So if we were to expand these two brackets, we would get back our cubic function. But again, remember we're factoring, so we just need to continue from here. Since we have a quadratic, we can now factor by decomposition or guess and check. And if you do so, you should end up with x plus 3 and x plus 2 as your remaining two factors. So this is the factored form of our cubic function. So now we can sketch this function. We have the three zeros at negative 3, negative 2, and at positive 1. Since we have a cubic function, we know the end behaviors are opposite in direction. And since the leading coefficient in standard form was positive, it's going to start here at negative infinity, go up through the first zero, down through the second, and then back up through the third zero. Let's go to degree 5 polynomial. So first off, before you use the factor theorem, you should always common factor first. And for this expression here, we have a common factor of x. So f of x is equal to x, and then now we have a quartic function that we need to factor. So one of our factors is x. We want to factor this remaining quartic function. So let's call this g of x. So now we're going to use the factor theorem in order to find a second factor for this function. So let's decide on what numbers we should try. So we look at the 12, that gives us a lot of numbers. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12. So I recommend, of course, starting with the lower numbers first. g at negative 1 does not equal 0. g at positive 1 does not equal 0. So we already know that x plus 1 and x minus 1 are not factors for this expression. And then if you try g minus 2, you end up getting a 0. So this is where we're going to start. So therefore, x plus 2 is a factor. So now that we know a factor, we're going to divide g of x by x plus 2. So first we need to get rid of the 6x to the 4. So we're going to multiply x plus 2 by 6x cubed. So that gives us 6x to the 4th plus 12x cubed. Subtracting, that gives us negative 17 x cubed. So let's move the negative 39 down. So we're going to multiply x plus 2 by negative 17 x squared. So that gives me negative 17 x cubed minus 34 x squared. And if we subtract, that gives us negative 5 x squared. Bring down the minus 4 x. Again, we're going to multiply x plus 2 by negative 5 x. 
So that gives me negative 5x squared minus 10x. And if we subtract, that gives me 6x. Bring down the 12. And finally, we're going to multiply x plus 2 by 6. And that gives me 6x plus 12. And we know we've done everything right because, again, we have a remainder of 0. So what I now know is that f of x is equal to x times x plus 2 times 6x cubed minus 17x squared minus 5x plus 6. So we still need to keep going. We now are going to try to factor this function, the cubic. So again, we need to use our factor theorem. We need to find factors for this cubic function. We need to sub in values to h of x until we get a 0. So let's look at our 6. That means we could try numbers like plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. Just note that we've already tried plus or minus 1, so that's not going to work. So we're going to try plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and so on. So again, you can try these yourself. h at negative 2, I don't get 0, so there's not a second x plus 2. h at positive 2, I also don't get a 0. However, if I try h at positive 3, I end up with a 0. So therefore, x minus 3 is our next factor. So once again, we're going to do some long division. So we have x minus 3, and we're dividing by h of x this time, which is 6x cubed minus 17x squared minus 5x plus 6. So to get rid of the 6x cubed, I'm going to multiply x minus 3 by 6x squared. So that gives me 6x cubed minus 18x squared, which gives me x squared when I subtract. So we bring down the negative 5x, and then I multiply x minus 3 by positive x. So that gives me x squared minus 3x. Subtracting gives me negative 2x. Bring down the positive 6. And then to get rid of the negative 2x, I'm going to multiply x minus 3 by negative 2. And that gives me negative 2x plus 6, which is great because, again, we have a remainder of 0. So therefore, x minus 3 is a factor. So once again, let's write out f of x. So f of x has factors of x, x plus 2, x minus 3. And then we're left with the 6x squared plus x minus 2. So once you're left with the quadratic, all you need to do is factor that quadratic if it's factorable. If you want to check, just look at the discriminant. If we look at b squared minus 4ac, we have 1 squared minus 4 times 6 times negative 2. And that gives me 49, which means this is factorable. So we end up with x, x plus 2, x minus 3. And if you factor this expression, you should end up with 3x plus 2 and 2x minus 1. All right, last example. Just to show you the strength of the remainder theorem. So it says when 2x cubed minus mx squared plus 3x minus 2 is divided by x plus 1, the remainder is negative 12. Determine the value of m. Without the remainder theorem, you'd have to use long division with a variable included in your division. But remember, it's telling you that the remainder is negative 12 when it's divided by x plus 1. So what you're looking for, imagine this is f of x, that if you evaluate f at negative 1, that you should have a remainder of negative 12. So again, this is part of the remainder theorem. So this is useful because now what we have is that negative 12 is equal to 2 times negative 1 cubed minus m times negative 1 squared, plus 3 times negative 1, minus 2. 
and all we need to do is solve for m. So we get negative 2 equals 2 minus m minus 3 minus 2, which gives us that negative 9 is equal to negative m, and therefore m is equal to positive 9. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. And here are some questions to try from your textbook.